Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all-new Lenovo Y40 14-inch multimedia and gaming laptop. All right, let's get started. For 2014, Lenovo introduces the all-new Y40, which is the successor to the Y410P. The Y40 features an all-new design that looks slick and stylish. However, this year there are a couple of big changes. Number one, you lose the quad-core i7-4700MQ. And number two, you lose the optical disk drive. All right, let me go and break down the specs for the model I have here. This laptop features Intel Core i7-4510U, 14-inch Full HD LED anti-glare backlit display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. For the graphics card, we have an AMD Radeon R9 M275 with two gigabytes of DDR3 video memory, eight gigabytes of RAM running at 1600 megahertz. For the wireless card, we have an Intel dual band wireless AC3160 with Bluetooth 4.0. For the storage, we have a 500GB hard drive plus an 8GB solid state hard drive built in. This laptop runs Microsoft Windows 8.1 and the retail price is $1,099 US. However, with Lenovo's weekly specials, this laptop can sometimes be found for $799 US. Let's test the boot up speed on a 500GB hybrid hard drive running at 5400RPM plus an 8GB solid state drive. Still booting up, logging in now. And we're done. This laptop booted up in about 24 seconds, which is about average for a solid state hard drive combo. Next, I'll talk about the design and build quality of the new Y40. The top and bottom covers feature a carbon fiber finish that looks very sleek. Take a look at this carbon fiber. The only issues I had was this thing is a fingerprint magnet. Look at all these fingerprints I have here on top. Let's go and take a look at the inside now. The palm rest features a beautiful metal finish that looks stunning. Let me give you a better view right here. The weight of this laptop is at 4.85 pounds and its thickest point is 0.9 inches. Compared to the Y410P, that laptop weighs 5.5 pounds and its thickest point is 1.29 inches. I have heard many people having the keyboard flex issues on the Y50, so let's go and test out the flex issues on the Y40. As you can see here, the flex is not too bad on the Y40 compared to the Y50. However, the center of the keyboard does dip in a little bit more. For this section, let's go ahead and take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Starting from the left, you got your AC charging port, gigabit ethernet port, full-size HDMI output, and two USB 3.0 ports. Now let's take a look at the right side. Here goes your Kensington security slot, USB 2.0 port, SP diff port, your headset port, and an SD card reader. This laptop features a 14-inch TN panel that offers less than average color accuracy. However, text look very sharp. Let me go ahead and show you some images here. The black levels on this laptop look slightly washed out, however, the brightness levels were good. Let's go ahead and test out this 14 inch TN panel by using our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter. Alright, we'll have the results on the sRGB and Adobe RGB soon. And the results are in. For the color gamut, we got 61% of Adobe sRGB. With this kind of score, you can expect very low color accuracy. For those of you that plan on editing video or photo editing, then I would look elsewhere. And for the color gamut on the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 46% coverage. Again, these scores are less than average than most Ultrabooks on the market today. For this section, let's go ahead and test out the viewing angles on this 14-inch non-IPS display. Alright, let's go ahead and rotate the laptop to the left. As you can see here, it's starting to glare out a little bit. Overall, the side-to-side -side viewing angles were not that good. Alright, let's go and rotate the laptop back to the center. Let's go and tilt the display all the way down. This will also give us an idea of how far the display tilts back. And that's at 100% right there. This laptop features an Intel Core i7-4510U running at 2 GHz with the turbo boost up to 3.1 GHz. The processing power from the i7-4510U was good. From day to day usage like web browsing, watching 1080p video clips, to even medium to high end games, this processing power was adequate. I just wish Lenovo would have kept the i7 4700MQ processor as found in the Lenovo Y410P because that processor is a beast. As many of you know, moving to a ULV dual core processor like the i7 4510U will yield better battery performance. However, multi core processing performance will lose up to 50% power. So yes, the Y40's processing power is a big downgrade from the Y410P. Let's go and take a look at some Geekbench 3 performance scores. This is a 64-bit version here. For the single core score, I got 2850. And for the multi-core score, I got 5618. Just a quick comparison, let me post a screenshot of the Y50, which features the i7-4700HQ, which is almost identical to last year's version of the Y410P, which had i7-4700MQ. 
As you can see here, the multi-core performance is 50% stronger than the one found in the Y40. Alright, let's go ahead and get back to the Y40. For the Cinebench R15, I got a CPU score of 259 CB. Alright, let's get to the main attraction of the show. Let's talk about the GPU this baby has. The Y40 features an AMD Radeon R9 M275 with 2GB of DDR3 video memory. For the best performance, I recommend going into your AMD Catalyst Control Center and selecting specific applications and games that you want to be utilizing the AMD Radeon GPU. For this section, we're going to test out the AMD Radeon R9 M275 by using 3D Mark Advance. For the Fire Strike, I got a score of 1,705. And for Skydiver, I got a score of 2,488. Next up, let's take a look at Cinebench 11.5. For the OpenGL test, I got a score of 41.76 frames per second. With these kind of scores, you can expect to play many of today's games on medium to high settings with a resolution of 1366 by 768 If you tweak some of your graphics settings, you'll be able to play certain games at 1080p. For example, I was able to get Bioshock Infinite to run at around 30 frames per second at 1080p. Alright, enough of these benchmarks. Let's see how this AMD Radeon performs live in action. This game is Skyrim, running on high settings at 1080p. Right now, we're about 35 to 40 frames per second. So far very smooth. Look at the texture on the walls here. Check out that detail on the fire. That looks spectacular. Alright, enough. Let's go ahead and knock out this dwarven spear. Get down. And here's a screenshot of the settings I had running on Skyrim. Next up is test out Bioshock Infinite running on high settings at 1080p. Right now we're about 30 frames per second. Let's go and look for some action here. Alright, where's everybody at? Come on now. There you go. So right now the frames per second is still around 31 to 33 frames per second. Which is still very good considering it's on high settings at 1080p. Come on, get down. Let's increase some action here and see if the frames per second is dropped. We're now 31 frames per second, back to 30, 28. Now for this section, our frames per second has dropped to around 23 to 25 frames per second. Let's see what happens when we increase the action. So about 22 frames per second was the lowest I saw. Alright, let's go and test out 720p on medium settings. Let's see what happens. So the frames per second has gone to 60 frames per second. And it's holding steady at 60. Now this game is running smooth like butter. Even on medium settings at 720p, take a look at the detail here from the smoke and the fire. Looks very good. The Y40 features a Symnatics trackpad that has been very smooth and precise. Let me give you a demo of the trackpad in action. There goes the charms menu, left to activate the multitasking tray. So far, very precise. Let me go and launch the MSN website so we can test out the scrolling performance. There we go. Let me try to scroll up and down. So far, very smooth. Let's go and test out the multi-touch gestures. So far, very smooth as well. Overall, the trackpad in the Y40 has been good. I just wish it was slightly bigger. However, since this is a gaming laptop, I highly doubt many of you will even use the stock trackpad. One of the main downsides to the new Y40 is going to be the keyboard. This keyboard has a short key travel and can get frustrating sometimes, especially when trying to type a report. However, for gaming situations, this keyboard was adequate. Let me go ahead and show you a demo of the key travel in action. Take a look at that, it's very short. And one of the biggest disappointments of the Y40 is there's not a backlit keyboard. That is highly disappointing, especially at CES 2014. They actually had a demo unit of the Y40 with a backlit keyboard in action. This laptop features a 500GB hard drive running at 5400RPM plus an 8GB solid state hard drive built in. For this test, we're going to use Crystal Disk Mark for the benchmark. For the sequential read speed, I got a score of 49.73 megabytes a second. And for the sequential write speed, I got a score of 110 megabytes a second. With these kind of scores, you can expect similar performance from a traditional 5400RPM hard drive. For the best performance, I recommend either getting the SSD model or upgrading this hard drive to an SSD. The sound quality and speaker levels from these JBL speakers were good considering its small footprint. However, I just wish Lenovo could have squeezed a small subwoofer in there just like they did on the Y50. That would have made it a better experience. Let's go and take a look at the internals of the laptop. There goes your standard 2.5 hard drive on the top left. Also keep in mind just like its bigger brother, the Y50, there is no M status support on this laptop. 
This laptop features two DIMM slots for your RAM. Right now only one is being used and that's being occupied by the PC3-12800 8GB DIMM stick. Followed by our Intel dual band wireless AC3160 which has been performing flawlessly. This wireless card has given me a solid fast connection without any hiccups. Overall great wireless card. This laptop features two fans, one for the GPU and one for the CPU. Overall, the fan noise was not that bad. During normal usage, I could barely hear the fan. The only time I was able to hear the fan running is during extended gameplay. The battery performance from this laptop has been good. On average, I'm able to get around 3.5 to 4.5 hours out of a full charge with screen brightness at around 70%. And that was with normal usage with no gaming. But if you plan on gaming without the AC adapter plugged in, you can expect anywhere from 2 to 2.5 two hours of gameplay. Now let's test the temperature control. With normal usage like web browsing, watching 1080p video clips, and word processing, the maximum CPU temperature was around 50 degrees Celsius. Now let's put some pressure on the CPU and GPU by launching Skyrim and playing for about an hour. So after an hour of gameplay, the maximum CPU temperature was around 79 degrees Celsius. With the combination of the ultra low voltage dual core i7 chip and the AMD Radeon M275, Lenovo was able to achieve these very efficient temperatures. Even with extended gameplay, the keyboard was still at a comfortable temperature to type on, and the palm rest was cooler than the keyboard. For 1099 US, I would not recommend this laptop. However, if you can catch this laptop for around 799 to 849, then I would recommend it because this laptop has good performance for that kind of price. And many of you are wondering, is this one better than the Y410P? No, the Y410P has a quad-core i7 processor, an optical disk drive, a backlit keyboard, and a slightly better NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M. The three items the Y40 has of the Y410P is its full HD 1920x1080p panel, a slim and sleeker design, and better battery performance. This completes my full review on the all-new Lenovo Y40. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button, and please subscribe to be notified of the latest videos just like this one. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace.